Welcome to Part 3 of Security Awareness Training. Hello, I'm David Shaw, your instructor for this module on security threats. I'm a project management professional and also professional in critical infrastructure protection. At the end of this module, you will understand why you are a target and who is targeting you. You will also know what the threats want from you and some basic protections. A few years ago, we would have had a long list of threats, and these would have been the most prominent. That was before we started seeing headlines like these. Now the hackers threatening us are working for organized crime, trying to get at our financial data, and government intelligence agencies collecting information in case they catch us jaywalking six years from now, or friending someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. The theory is that to find a needle in the haystack, you have to examine every straw. This graphic is simplistic, but it shows the basic idea, and how you could even end up on a secret no-fly list, even though that is totally nonsensical. This kind of analysis doesn't alert us to the invasion of Crimea, or the hijacking of Malaysian Flight 370. As mentioned a moment ago, it seems like another lifetime, but it was just a few years that the main security threats were from hackers and script kiddies and disgruntled employees. Not anymore. Today the threats are from organized crime and big data collection by commercial companies and from governments using cyber weapons of mass destruction. All of these are using data aggregation in a big way. Organized crime uses social engineering for identity theft and to steal your money or data. Social engineering and techniques like phishing are covered in other modules in this series. Organized crime also uses software like malware and virus programs to attack your computer and network in order to gather information. A new type of attack is ransomware, which locks your screen or encrypts your hard drive, then prompts you to pay a ransom demand online to get the key to release your computer. Organized crime also takes advantage of big data about you collected by companies. A typical data breach from an attack by hackers will involve hundreds of thousands to tens of millions of users in a single event, putting debit and credit card numbers and customer contact information in the hands of organized crime. There are separate modules in the techniques used by organized crime, so for now we will move on to big data. Big data is a massive collection of information so that analysts can uncover previously unknown patterns. Google, Facebook, and other internet companies have aggressively expanded the kinds of data collected on you. You may have noticed that even your grocery store, pharmacy, and coffee shop have started to track you using big data sets. This helps them increase revenues by building better targeted ads that predict what products you want. My local coffee shop, which I'm showing because they are totally great and I admire them, uses a rewards card that is actually an electronic key fob. However, note that their web developers have left some holes in the system that are very common practices, but which should be unacceptable today. So, you trade your personal information for free or discounted services. What could be better? The rub is that your data gets sold and aggregated and exploited in unexpected ways. Your health insurer, for example, could find out which medications you take, what your diet is like, how much coffee you drink, and how many times you searched online for things that might indicate risky sexual behavior. It's a security principle in government and business that aggregated information is more sensitive than its individual components. Always remember that if the service is free, you are the product that is being sold to someone else. That is why your profile, preferences, and social connections are being tracked. This data gets sold to brokers who aggregate it and sell it back to companies and the government. This aggregated information is more sensitive and open to abuse, and it should not be collected without your knowledge and consent. In the March 1, 2014 issue, the prestigious Economist magazine asked, What's gone wrong with democracy? Part of the answer lies in the breaking of the social contract between government and citizens through the rise of the security state 
and obsessive and pervasive spying on our emails to friends, phone calls to doctors, and web searches for information. We expected this of the Stasi, but not of our own democratic governments. The genesis of this is the United States military doctrine of war without end. It's hard to comprehend that we have all become targets in a war without end, based on a doctrine articulated by Dick Cheney in the United States. Dick Cheney was Vice President of the United States from 2001 to 2009, under President George W. Bush. In hindsight, it was inevitable that globalization brought about by mass communication would morph the war on drugs into the global war on terror. And in turn, the global war on unidentified people would give rise to weapons of mass surveillance. This mass surveillance is coordinated by military intelligence in five English-speaking nations, the so-called Five Eyes. The techniques used by the Five Eyes are staggering in their scope and have become called weapons of mass destruction. Operating outside democratic control, they are designed to disrupt industries, destabilize societies, and control or ruin individuals. That is why it is so important to understand that you are an innocent target and why you must actively protect your privacy and personal and corporate information. Cyber weapons of mass disruption fall into several categories of which these are the most important. Global weapons of mass surveillance orchestrated by the United States and its partners. State cyber attacks done by several nations. Social disruption of other countries to achieve foreign policy goals. And controlling individuals and group dissent. After the destruction of the World Trade Center in New York, the United States embarked on the global war on terror, supported by the major English-speaking countries. Everyone became a possible suspect, so the military response was mass surveillance. Weapons of mass surveillance were first developed by the NSA in the United States and the GCHQ in the United Kingdom. GCHQ's budget is dependent on the NSA. These two agencies, operating under secret laws, spied on cell phone calls and text messages. They tapped internet cables for emails and information held in cloud services. They introduced security flaws in software and backdoors and routers. They took control of criminal botnets to plant viruses. They deliberately weakened the basic protocols of the Internet. It was war, so if it was technically feasible, they did it. Working together, the NSA and GCHQ have corrupted some of the basic principles of democracy. Freedom of information, freedom of expression, and the right to privacy. Another consequence is that they have validated the use of surveillance by authoritarian countries around the world. State cyber attacks are the flip side of surveillance techniques. Although you might know of cyber attacks by organized crime for identity theft, you are not likely to be aware of state cyber attacks. Cyber attacks are tested or conducted by several countries. The techniques include industrial sabotage to destroy processing equipment, business espionage against global companies, and spying on trade negotiations, diplomats, and heads of state. A Google search on the NSA and social disruption yielded over 14 million hits, so on this subject you are going to have to do your own homework and reading between the lines. There is an online dimension to all social activities today, through media like Twitter and Facebook and messaging apps, and this dimension can be infiltrated and steered or disrupted. The outcome is unpredictable, like the protests leading up to the Ukraine election. These were meant to support the opposition parties, but instead they turned into riots and a coup that overthrew the government just days before the election was scheduled. As George Orwell predicted in his novel 1984, cyber weapons of mass destruction are also deployed to put a big chill on democratic dissent. We all have a private self. Every phone call you make to your spouse about a bad boss, every politically incorrect joke you send in an email, every purchase with a credit card, every web search about drugs of any kind, 
and the websites for abortion centers that you visit are monitored and stored for future use. Think about it. Would you give me all this information about yourself? Why not? Some techniques are insidious. In the United Kingdom and Australia, for example, if you want access to content not approved by the government, you have to sign up to opt out of web filters. This puts you on a government list of deviants. Another technique is to use mass surveillance to identify whistleblowers and other informers who provide information to journalists about wrongdoing. So they can be prosecuted and the wrongdoers can go free. Even respected politicians are not free. In March 2014, United States Senator Dianne Feinstein, the chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, announced grave concerns that CIA officers had broken the law by spying on her and the committee. At the same time, the United States government announced plans to use automated real-time surveillance on five million government employees. In extreme cases, the techniques of mass surveillance can be used to discredit dissenters by planting information on blogs, Twitter or Facebook, or even by planting false emails. There are possibly a dozen programs used by military intelligence to collect and use your information. We will give just one example of a program called Turbine. With Turbine, no humans are required to exploit phones, personal computers, routers, and virtual private networks. In tech speak, Turbine pawns you. Pawn means to own you for the purposes of domination or humiliation. You can imagine that a politician who has been pawned will not be critical of mass surveillance by military intelligence. This is one of the corrosive effects of these programs on the checks and balances in a democracy. Here is a graphic that is now in the public domain that shows the capability of Turbine. Turbine is fully automated. With Turbine, no humans are required to exploit your online activities, software updates, phones, personal computers, routers, and virtual private networks. There's always going to be some kind of attack vector available for exploit. Don't panic or give up. These are real threats to your life. Identity theft, for example, could ruin your life, so you should take precautions. To protect yourself, you should have some awareness of safe computing. Protect against attacks by organized crime, espionage, and mass surveillance with the same set of measures both at work and at home. Your corporation will have a firewall to segregate its network from the larger internet. A firewall controls and monitors incoming traffic from the internet to your computer and blocks certain kinds. At home you will also have a firewall within your Wi-Fi router. In addition, you should also have a firewall running on your desktop or portable computer. Both Microsoft Windows and Apple OS X have built-in firewalls. I also run a proxy server in my laptop, but this is not for the faint of heart to install. It monitors outgoing traffic and also the attempts of programs to access my hard drive. Since installing it, I have been shocked by the number of applications. PDFs, for example, that try to call home to send data to the mothership. Virus and spam protection is vital. These programs are not 100%, but they do provide a reasonable degree of protection against known attack programs. Commercial and free versions are available and they are easy to use. Third on our list is encryption. Encrypt everything. We will learn more about encryption in other modules. We will also cover email and web security in other modules. For now, you should become familiar with the privacy and security controls in all applications that you use and restrict and delete cookies and histories. Here are some more best practices. Disaggregate your information online. Use different profile names and always give the minimum information required. Give false information for things like your birth date and the answers to security questions. But keep a record somewhere. I once got locked out of PayPal for two years because I forgot an answer. Use separate email accounts for correspondence, logons to services like Facebook, and for shopping online with a credit card. You want to make it hard for snoopers to aggregate your information. For the same reason, don't give your postal code at the grocery store. Back up your computer information regularly. 
You can do this inexpensively with a USB drive, but keep the backup offline until you need to update it. If it's attached all the time, a virus or ransomware attack can also kill your backups. New business models also introduce new risks. We used to buy software outright. Now we subscribe to it monthly with online automatic updates. Although these updates are done securely, there has been at least one case of spying using what is called a man-in-the-middle attack, and there will be more. And as we saw before, Turbine can target your updates. Where once we had nominal control over a computer environment, today we have operating systems and software applications phoning home every day for automatic updates. The counterpoint is that organizations fall further and further behind in productivity as IT departments lose their capability to test and keep applications up to date. It's common to see organizations using old software known to be insecure because the IT department does not have the capacity to test and roll out a newer secure version. Cloud computing introduces new security risks that you should know about. This is the subject of a separate module, but for now you should know the words United States Patriot Act and observe the golden rule. Keep your corporate and personal data within your country. This is the end of this overview of security threats. The main message is that unlike 10 years ago when the threat was from individuals, today the threat is from the aggregators of information, be they organized crime, big data companies, or extrajudicial spying. If you have any feedback or questions, please send me an email.